Hello everyone, today I want to show you how I made this mechanical watch. In the description you will find a complete list of parts, so let's get going. Mom. <laughs> I got a 38mm case, it has a sapphire top and bottom, front and back, and has a screw down crown. The movement is a ETA2824 top grade. I got a dial that I liked, but I didn't like the hands, so I ordered a different set. I start by taking the movement out of its case and then flipping it over and placing it into a movement holder. I then take the rotor off. It is only in the way of what I want to do. I don't want to accidentally damage it. And this rotor or oscillating weight is what um, winds the mainspring, and the mainspring is what powers the entire watch. So as your wrist moves around, this little piece of metal spins around, and it transfers that energy into um, a little clutch system and that then transfer the energy into the mainspring. A lot of movements actually have um, both manual winding as well as automatic winding capabilities. The dial itself is attached to the movement uh, with these little things called the dial feet. And each movement has its own unique dial feet position. So some dials will come with multiple dial feet and you have to cut at least one, if not uh, two or three of them off, depending on the position of your dial feed clips. So to open the ETA2824 dial clips, you actually have to hold the dial or hold the movement quite firmly and push out with a, a screwdriver. Now this is actually, it takes quite a bit of effort and you have to be very careful when prying this feet loose. And there's one at approximately 3 o'clock and one at approximately 9 o'clock. Once I have the dial feet clips exposed, I just flip the movement over and I'm ready to um, figure out which of the little dial feet I need to cut off from my dial. On my dial, the extra dial's feet are located around the 6 and 12 o'clock position. So I just use um, tweezers and twist them back and forth and they'll come right off. But in this case, um, they didn't come off as cleanly as I liked. So I went ahead and used a uh, rotary tool to clean up and make sure that it's not sticking up too much. Before I put the dial on, I used uh, Rotico or uh, watch cleaning putty, whatever you want to call it, to make sure that the surface is really clean because once I put the dial on, I really don't want to take it back off because those dial feed clips are really hard to pry open. The next part that goes on is the hour wheel. Um, this is what the hour hand is attached to. and. I realized in post that this was not a good shot. So here is another example. Basically when the movement arrived, this wheel is detached and you place the wheel on the middle and then place the washer on top and the washer keeps space between the back of the dial and um, the hour wheel itself. The next part that goes on is the date wheel spacer and this part um, basically makes sure that there is enough space between the date wheel and the back of the dial so that the date wheel can turn freely. And now I'm ready to install the dial itself. Um, I had a little bit of trouble lining up the two holes with the two pegs and I found the first one uh, and I kind of feel around for the second one. So if you have trouble installing it, um, it could be that your dial feet are slightly bent. So once the dial is in, um, I need to push in these dial feet clips and I have to push fairly firmly in, in terms of a watch part to get them to go in because this is a, uh, a relatively tight mechanical fit. 
I then checked the dial installation by um, turning the date wheel around and it turns freely so I think we're ready for the next step. Before I can install any of the hands, I need to find the midnight position. So I pull the crown all the way out and I'm turning it and turning it, basically moving the minute hand until I feel just a little bit of resistance as though that date wheel is about to turn and that is midnight. The first hand that goes on is the hour hand and that's pointed towards the 12 o'clock position. Putting the hands on is definitely the hardest part of the whole entire watch assembling process, at least for me. It's, um, you have to really be careful not to push too hard, but you also need to be firm enough to push the hand in if you want to use a straight up and down motion. And I'm trying to film and this is very difficult to put on when I'm trying to film. So I actually put the hour hand on off camera. So one thing that is, might seem obvious is that you have to buy the hands that fit the movement. So the pinions are slightly different sized depending on the movement. The pressure I'm using is firm, but not hard. If you push too hard on these pinions, you can bend the entire movement. So be very careful with that. Make sure that the back of the movement is supported. If this is your first time uh, putting a set of hands on, I would advise um, be prepared to get a second set because um, this is a very delicate process and that hand bends very easily. And just like the hour hand, I couldn't get the minute hand to go on on camera, but I was able to line it up off camera and sort of push it in on camera. And I think that the angle of the camera I'm trying to shoot and film and do this at the same time made it more difficult than it needs to be. And now I'm checking to see at what time the date window changes. And it's around the 15 minute mark and I'm happy with that. I keep turning the minute hand until the hour hand makes a full rotation. I just want to make sure that the hands are cleared of each other and of the dial itself. After some time had passed, um, I felt like I could do better than a 12-15 date window change. So I took the hands off and redid the process. And I managed to get the date window to flip at almost exactly 12 o'clock. Now that all the hands are in position, it's a good time to um, watch the sweeping second hand, see if it goes all the way around without hitting anything. And also, uh, to make sure that the three hands don't hit each other and that they are parallel to the surface of the um, dial itself. In the next step, I'm going to put the dial and movement and hands and everything you see here into a case. So I want to make sure that the front side of it is super clean. The next step is to remove the crown. Make sure it is pulled all the way out. You'll notice that the balance wheel is not moving and you push where my tweezer is pointing on the CTA 2824. If you remove the crown when it's in the pushed in position, you run the risk of gears inside not aligning properly when you try to push it back in. My apologies for having my hand in the way, but it was just difficult to film. Um, but if you push that button and pull on the crown, it will come out. I'm going to clean the case before I put it on top of the watch and whenever a part is not being used I like to keep it covered and I'm using a little glass here. I think the easiest way to put the case onto the watch is to lay the watch down, put the case on top and then flip the whole thing over. The crown you see came with the case. The one that came with the movement is meant to be replaced by this one. To hold the movement inside the watch, the case came with this retaining ring. But a lot of the times the movement is held in uh, to the case by these little clips that look like price tags. You screw this one end onto the movement and the flat end slots into somewhere along the case. All right, so now it's time to trim the stem. So I have the stem that came with the movement screwed into the crown that came 
with the uh, watch case. And now I'm just going to measure uh, how much play there is. It looks like about three or four millimeters. So my initial estimate was that I need to cut down about three to four millimeters from the threaded part of the stem. Um, the thing is though, uh, you can have it a little bit long and you can always cut a little bit short. But if you're, you cut too much off at once, then you have to get a new stem. So it's better to underestimate and just gradually cut it down to the right size than it is to cut too much of it at once and have to get a new stem. So I slowly trimmed the stem back, put it on the crown, put it in the watch and to check if it fits. And I've done this several times, each time taking off just a tiny amount so I get that perfect fit. And once I do, I'm going to deburr the tip and then put a little Loctite on there and then put it onto the crown. And I'm going to let the Loctite set up overnight. So before I put the stem on, I uh, took a really close look at all the parts and make sure that they were clean. And if you are going to do this, I really suggest getting one of these um, magnifying glasses that you can wear on your head. They were very convenient. I was trying to be as thorough as possible. I really didn't want to see a speck of dust once I close up the case. So to insert the crown back in there, all you have to do is basically push it back in, firm but gentle. The last thing that goes back onto the movement is the rotor and it goes back on the reverse direction of how I took it off. I'm putting a little bit of a silicone sealant onto um, the o-ring for the case back. I'm wiping most of it off and it just sort of sits in there. I first tighten the case back by hand. Then I'm going to use this tool to help me increase leverage and really give it a firm screw down of that case back. And the watch is pretty much finished. When I first finished this watch, um, it was plus or minus two to three seconds a day. I uh, adjusted the hairspring and got it down to plus or minus one second a day. And if you want to learn how to do that, go ahead and follow the link in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed the project. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.